So don't tell me you ain't got it or you can't do something Yeah, everybody's spitting but they ain't saying nothing I'm just trying to make a difference, give you something to think about I ain't worried about a status or some goddamn clout If you see me in the streets, don't be afraid to shout them But I'm out Watch 2014 Melomania, whatever you want to call it, it has taken over Chicago. I've been here at the United Center all day long. A really, really exciting day. The entire stadium itself, all the LED boards welcome Carmelo Anthony to Chicago. They had massive pictures of Carmelo in a Bulls jersey, number seven, next to the NBA championship trophy, the Larry O'Brien trophy, welcoming him here to Chicago. Yo, 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 yo. What's up? What's good with all my bull lifers out there, man? Yo, are y'all ready for this? Are y'all ready for this, man? It is completely insane. Carmelo Anthony is finally a Chicago Bull. It was five years ago that the Chicago Bulls were pitching for Carmelo Anthony to join this team. Now, we look back and in hindsight, all of us are completely overjoyed that Carmelo didn't join this team back when we wanted him. Because had he, we obviously would have been in the same situation that the Knicks were in. And you look at how he is now, how he's bouncing all over the place, you know. It's a complete train wreck. But now we have Carmelo Anthony here in Chicago. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be very short-lived. It's a Michael Carter Jr. deal. The same way the Houston Rockets sent over Michael Carter Jr. to the Bulls for cash and all of that, the same thing is happening here. The Houston Rockets are just dumping all of the players that they don't want on the Chicago Bulls because they know that the team is money hungry. And as long as they're going to throw in a, a few million dollars, then the Bulls are like, all right, send them over. And that's essentially what this is here. Carmelo Anthony, I highly doubt will suit up for this Chicago Bulls team. It's just... It's just insanely funny that the Bulls have Carmelo Anthony on this team right now. I, I I would love to see Carmelo Anthony suit up and play at least one game, man. They got to let Melo get out there at least one time. <laughs> that would, man, that would be absolutely amazing. And why not? Why not? We aren't going anywhere anyway. I'm pretty sure Melo would only help the tanking efforts. I highly doubt that Melo would help us get a W or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? He can't be any worse than what any of the other guys out there are doing. Coming from Adrian Wojnarowski, quote, Carmelo Anthony will not play a game for the Bulls, but it is possible that the franchise holds off on waiving him until the trade deadline. League sources tell ESPN Bulls could include him in a one for one trade, but can't aggregate his contract in another deal. So, yeah, I mean, if the Bulls did decide to uh, hold him here all the way until the February 7th trade deadline, you know, with potential of, you know, swapping him or putting him in some sort of trade package or whatever the case may be. I'm all for that. I definitely am all for that. Plus, I think that would also give us a higher chance of seeing him play out there on the court as well. You know, so <laughs> whatever, man, I'm all for it. Let's hop off of this topic real quick and get to the real nitty gritty. Next topic, Wendell Carter Jr. Wendell Carter Jr. will be out 12 to 8 weeks with the thumb injury. Now, it was reported today that Wendell Carter Jr. has successful thumb surgery, and as I just stated, he will be out 12 to 8 weeks. Now, with this long span of time that Wendell Carter Jr. is going to be out, we can all expect him to be done for the rest of the season. The Bulls have played a total of 47 games, I believe, so by him being out another, what, two to three months the bulls are just gonna hang it up by the time he comes back i'm pretty sure it's gonna be near the end of the season plus the bulls aren't going to the playoffs anyway so there's no need for wendell carter jr to waste any time and come back i think it would be cool for him to maybe get some reps in the summer league or something like that i would like to see him you know get some warm-ups playing in the summer league but this season no and look guys that only helps our chances at tanking 
you know, that that's going to help the tanking efforts by Wendell Carter Jr. not being out there. Plus, I highly doubt that the Bulls are going to stop their efforts in trying to trade away Robin Lopez, which would mean if we do become successful at doing so, then we'd have Felicio out there as well. Felicio would be getting, would be getting a lot more time. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it, it's looking pretty good as far as our tanking efforts, man. Um, but with this injury, um, it, it kind of sucks if you ask me on the other end of the spectrum because um, I just really wanted to see Wendell Carter Jr. get more reps with Lloyd Marketing and you know some of these other guys as well like Chris Dunn, Zach Levine. Although at the same time, I don't feel like those four players together are going to be the future. I don't think that we're gonna have all four of those guys, you know, once this Bulls team is contending for playoff spots. But I do think that Wendell Carter Jr. is one of those concrete pieces for our future. So I would like to see him get more reps with mainly Lloyd Marketing because I think that he's our best piece that we have right now. Despite Zach Levine being the more pure scorer, I like Lloyd Marketing's game overall better for our future and I mean that's just me but we can tank on with the hopes of landing the phenom Zion Williamson so tank on guys tank on but all right next topic that I want to get into is today the Bulls move to the third worst team in the NBA only behind the Cleveland Cavaliers and now the New York Knicks. So the Bulls, they jump in front of the Knicks to get that third spot. Or I'm sorry, I should say the East because I believe that there's a team out West that has a really sucky record as well, the Suns. I believe the Phoenix Suns have only won about 10 games as well. Correct me if I'm wrong though. So the Bulls moved to third worst in the East and fourth worst in the entire league and as I mentioned earlier, you see where that has gotten us last year. In the past, it has gotten us picking in the second half of the top 10 in the NBA draft, and that's exactly where we don't want to be. This year, the draft is said to be very, very top heavy. We don't even hear about many players outside of Zion Williamson, RJ Barrett, Cam Reddish, and a few other guys, and those are all Duke players. You, you do hear about a number of other guys, but I'm just saying, we don't hear about, you know, a top 10 heavy draft coming in next season of like those talented very talented like potential star players in this next year's draft so if we do end up having to pick you know somewhere outside of the top five it may not look too good for it it may be one of those throwaway drafts now hopefully I'm wrong and that isn't the case you know in not only for us but for the league period but I'm just saying that's one of the main reasons why we can't afford to be picking in the second half of the top 10 in the NBA's in the NBA's draft come uh, next season. So with all that being said, man, the Bulls definitely need to really get Robin Lopez out of here so Felicio can be playing more minutes. Not that Jabari Parker is one of those pieces who affects wins very much, but at the same time, I think that we have a number of players on this team that could do a lot worse than Jabari Parker, so moving him would also help that. I just don't want this Chicago Bulls team being stuck in mediocrity for forever. Like I mentioned, like I really would like to see I don't know, some, some development out of these guys, but I don't think that it's gonna be the case with Chris Dunn, Zach Levine, Lloyd Marketing, and Wendell Carter Jr. I really don't think that those four guys are all gonna be here, but I don't know, we shall see guys, but they ended that 10 game losing streak, so now we shall see what happens next with these guys. All right, next topic that I wanna touch on is Dwayne Wade's final game in Chicago.
Now, Saturday, the Chicago Bulls played the Miami Heat where they lost that game. 117 Heat, 103 Bulls. And Dwayne Wade, he, I, the Bulls gave Dwayne Wade a tribute, which I thought was really, really cool. They made Dwayne Wade look like he was a dope player when he played for us, which he really did have some nice highlights. But Dwayne Wade's defense just really sucked. But yet and all i mean i still love Dwayne wade as a person you know as the legend he is one of the top shooting guards of all time so i do have love for Dwayne wade um but i thought it was really cool seeing him and benny the bull swap jerseys and you know the bulls tribute video and all of that i really thought that was really nice especially for it to be Dwayne wade's final year in the nba so it'll be his final year playing in the United Center. So big ups to Dwayne Wade, man. All the best to you, bro. And you know, yet and still, even though you didn't play great defense for us, I am glad that you were able to fulfill a childhood dream and play for the Chicago Bulls. It was nice seeing you here just for those, you know, moral purposes, I guess. <laughs> But, all right, guys, uh, that's pretty much it. Our next game, we will be facing the Atlanta Hawks, and that's a game that the Bulls could potentially win. Trey Young and those guys over there, they are playing fairly decent basketball. They're not as bad as the Chicago Bulls and a couple of the other teams that we just mentioned today, but I still do think that that's one of those games where the Chicago Bulls could squeak out a win. That's pretty much my time, guys. It's your man, Wise Black. I'm about to get out of here. Y'all get up with me on social media at Radical underscore creator. That's Twitter, Instagram, and on Facebook. Catch me at Wise Black. I'm out. Peace.